We have head coach Phil Cunningham, as well as number three, Wesley Person, and number 23, Jordan Varnado. Coach Cunningham, could you please begin with a brief opening statement? Well, just, just proud of our guys to, to fight through a, a very tough situation. To give Texas State credit, uh, they're the best defensive team in the league. They're a tough, hard-nosed team, and you combine that with our fourth game in, in, in less than four days real time there. Uh, just, just uh, I look at the stat sheet, and, and uh, you know, you know we're, we're a team that we've been averaging uh, over 80 points a game down here, but we knew it wouldn't be like that today. And again, that's, that's the way Texas State plays, and they did a terrific job. And, and uh, we won the game at the free throw line, 16 out of 19. We'll go ahead with questions for the student athletes first. Please wait for a microphone and identify yourself by name and media outlet. Questions? We've got a Gary in the middle. Yeah. Um, if somebody had told you I, that you were going to go one for 17. We, we wanted to hold just to oh. get the student athletes first. Oh, if we could get them out, sorry about that. Yeah, they said that, and that's my fault. Um, Wesley, um, what does it mean? I, I know your dad played four years in the SEC, had an incredible career. He never got to experience the NCAA tournament or a conference tournament. What, is, what does it mean to you to help your team get to this, this point? Uh, it, it means a lot. Uh, we just had to keep believing. Uh, we had a rough start you know, to my career as far as uh, wins. And uh, just kept believing. And uh, we, knew, we knew coming in you know, this summer that we had a special team this year and uh, we could do big things. And, mm -hmm. We just kept believing that. Kept we worked hard over worked hard over the summer and preseason, and uh, we just uh, finally started clicking. You know, late in the season, and uh, we carried that momentum until this tournament. And we were able to win four. And, and what I was asking him, what does it say about your team that you were able to? You, I think you led the league in three-point shooting, and you went one for 17 today, and you still won. Um, it just it just shows a lot about our team. Uh, we we're not one-dimensional. I know we led led the uh, league in three-point shooting, but we have guys that can play off the dribble and. Uh, we got guys that can score the ball in the paint, so that uh, shows our uh, versatility. We're going to the back, back left with the TV camera. Hey, Wes, we talked at uh, the beginning of the season, and your exact words were, we have the talent to make this run to the tournament. Did that ever waver at all this year with this team or anything? Uh, no, we, uh, we knew uh, it would be you know, some growing pains at first, just uh, learning to play with each other. but. We just kept believing that, and uh, we knew we were special, and uh, we knew we could, you know, do it something like this and win the Sun Belt Championship. Jordan, it seemed, you know, they, they were going at you this game. You know, they were trying to make sure, you know, you stayed down in the paint. Kind of just what was your, your approach to this game with, with a tough-nosed defense like Texas State has? Um, trying to get their bigs in foul trouble. Um, our coaches told them to keep trying to pound them inside. Don't try to out-muscle them. Just try to use your quickness and – and um, get them off their feet, shot faking and stuff like that. So, yeah. For either one of you guys, uh, the big talk of the tournament has been the play of you two, but Jeremy Holloman, Alex Hicks, and all these players really stepped up out there today. Did that kind of take the load off of you two a little bit, you know, putting the ball in their hands, letting them score? Uh, well, we, we play with those guys every day, and uh, we know what they're capable of. Jeremy, he's an unbelievable scorer. And, uh, we knew he, he was capable of going off for what he you know did today. And Alex was big today on the defensive end and rebound as well. Further questions for the student athletes? Okay, thanks guys. You can head back to the locker room. Yeah, <coughs> and we'll go ahead with questions for Coach Cunningham at this time. Gary, did you need to? Yeah. We'll get that question out of the yes. way. Yes. Um, just the stat, it's pretty unbelievable that you shot one for seven, as good a defense as they are, that you shot one for 17, and we're pretty much in control of the game. It was close, but um, you never lost the lead in the second half. What does it say about your team that you were that they were able to win that way? Well, the thing that stands out to me was, was Texas State's defense is so good. They're the, like I say, they're the best half-court defensive team in the league. And, and so I knew, again, combined the fact that that's our fourth game in four days, I, I, I knew we wouldn't shoot it uh, like we have been. It's just anybody who plays against Texas State and Coach Casper knows that. And we told our guys in the locker room before the game we've got to be good on second chance shots because they're really good on their first, you know, first shot defense. And and but but I didn't think you know if you told me we were going to go one for 17 and we'd win, I'd say uh, no way. But but the thing this team has done 
uh, and we talked about it in the locker room just now, is, is, is we've, we've defended down the stretch. And we've always been a team that can score. We we're, we're, didn't show today, people haven't seen us, but we're one of the better offensive teams in the league. But, but we've been guarding lately. You know, we're not great defensively right now, but we're, we're pretty good. When you combine a team that can score like that, who's guarding, uh, makes, makes you even better. And you played pretty well down the stretch, but you lost your last two regular season games. Did you see this coming, this dominant four-game run, and, and what do you attribute it to? Well, we lost our last two road games yeah. to, tech, to the two Texas schools. We actually won our last okay. two, two home games. Mm -hmm. and, and I think those games were important because after we went to Texas and lost those two, then, then we were at a, at a crossroads in terms of confidence. And uh, we came back and won two games at home. Um, the, the second game we won over Little Rock, we just sold a game we should have lost. And mm -hmm. basically, they controlled the whole game. So that gave us some confidence coming into this week. And, and then uh, we liked our bracket. We were four and two against our bracket. So we thought we had a chance uh, to make the finals. And then uh, just, you know, one thing we told our guys, hey, you get to Saturday, then anything can happen. Going to the back with the TV once again. Coach, same thing I asked the players. Uh, they've been really the talk of this whole tournament, their play. but. Jeremy, Devon, Alex really stepped up. How important was it to get those guys incorporated as well to take some of the pressure off Wesley and Jordan because they were getting double teamed a lot out there? Well, Jeremy Holloman gets gets you know very little credit for what he's done for this team. I mean, he's a he comes off the bench, but I mean he, he's always in the game and at the end of the game, and, and he's a, you know he's such a good scorer uh, and he can hit threes. He can hit the mid range pull up. He can drive to the rim. He's got a kind of old school game. Most people. Uh, don't have Kane hit you from those three areas like he can, but but uh, he he's been terrific. Uh, he cooled off a little bit at the end of the season. I think he got tired, but but he bounced back this week and went back to his regular form. And then you mentioned a couple of guys, uh, Devon Walker. I mean, he just he doesn't you know you don't see it in the stat sheet what he does for this team, but his toughness and leadership and and he guarded you know he guarded Tilbury uh, today and he he wanted that assignment. And he was worn out, but he kept guarding him. And then uh, Alex Hicks was really good. Uh, this week down here, and you know, uh, we've been we've been singing his praises all year long. I, I think he's only scratched the surface of how good he could be. I thought our point guards played good down here. Both of them, we've got kind of a two point guard system there, and Peace really sparked us tonight. Uh, they both played well, and, and uh, they got OJ Black in foul trouble, and I think him being out of the game was important for us. Uh, but yeah, every, everybody contributed. Just just how does it feel, Coach? Uh, I know we talked at the beginning of the season. After three straight losing seasons, you said you didn't want to put any pressure on yourself for this year. Is it kind of a weight lifted off your shoulder now, bringing that trophy back to Troy? Yeah, it's just a, right now we're just so caught up. It's been such a day-to-day -day process, and uh, and that's what it is in coaching. You just you just put your head down and keep grinding, and and uh, fortunately some good things have happened to us. And and you can you can go through your whole career, and I've 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 been coaching my whole life, and I've I've seen it. You can go through your whole career and not have opportunities like this. So we're just we're so fortunate to, to have this opportunity, and, and we're going to enjoy it. I'm going to have one over here on the right side. Les East with the AP. Coach, Jordan not only had a double-double, I think he scored 10 straight points for you until Wesley made those last two foul shots. Just his impact on the game throughout, but especially when you were trying to keep the lead there late. Well, Les, he was, he was struggling. I think at one point I asked the coaches, I said, I said, what's Jordan from the field? And I may be wrong about this, but I think at one point he was four for 16. And, and that's totally out of character him. But give, give uh, Texas State their defense. They were good on him. They're tough, physical. And he's, obviously he's tired, too. That, that contributed to it. But, but we just kept telling him in huddles, man, you're going, you're going to be fine because he's a real conscientious young man. And, and you could see he was a little shook there. But, uh, but, but I tell you, down the stretch, he took over. And he hit some pressure free throws too. I mean, that, that's that, the the free throws he hit uh, were just they they were the difference in winning and losing. Because had he missed those, now we now we've got to guard them, and, and they've got a guy down there who can beat you by himself in Tilbury. One last question in the back left. I know everyone's wanting to know, Coach. Uh, the dancing shoes dusted off. Are you gonna give us a little little dance or something? Do that for the team back in the locker room. We we already had a little celebration. I'm not a dancer, so but uh, but uh, we're, we're definitely you know we're definitely going to enjoy this. We told them, you know, they have no idea what they just did. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that the NCAA tournament is is the greatest experience for a college athlete out there. It's just it, it, it just is. It's, it's in, in all in all, uh, just in simple terms, it, it's the greatest experience for a student athlete 
uh, in any of them, and, and they're going to have a good time this week. Thank you very much, Coach. Congratulations again. This is State Bobcats. We have head coach Danny Casper and number one, Caven Gilbert Tilbury. Coach, if you could please start with a brief opening statement. Well, you know, I think all of you understand how disappointed we are. Uh, you know, we felt like, we felt like this tournament w was ours uh, to win after beating UTA the way we did. Um, we, we played uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically, I think, uh, poorly in terms of handling the basketball, 17 turnovers. And, <clears throat> you know, we lost Caven early to fouls and that hurt us. Uh, we did not shoot the ball very well, but they did not either. So we out-rebounded them. We even shot a better percentage than they did. And you look at, you look at, you look, they did, they did pretty much everything I asked them to do, hold them to a low shooting percentage, out-rebound them. Don't let them hurt us from the three. They were one for 17. It really came down to, we gave up probably too many points off turnovers and, and shot ourselves in the foot in that area. I mean, it's very disappointing because Cavens has been with me four years. And uh, he's been through a lot where we had a program where my first year, which was just a very difficult year in terms of uh, people on the team wanting to work with me and, and, uh, want, and, and working as a team. Cavens stuck with us. It was easy to walk away. Every year we've gotten better. This year I thought Kevin and OJ and Bobby provided great leadership. So they're really hurting right now and, 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 and of course I'm hurting too because I, cause we're not going to big dance but you hurt double because your seniors are hurting so much and you're, and you're, and you're not going to the big dance. Story of the game in terms of talking about the game, it, it really comes down to turnover 17 to five. We really threw away a lot of shot opportunities. They shot it 60 times, we shot it 48. So that's the only stat and perhaps the offensive rebounding that, that stands out in terms of where we got outplayed. Thank you, Coach. This time we'll take questions for Kevin. Uh, please wait for the microphone and identify yourself by media outlet and name on the left side. Uh, Ishmael Johnson, San Marcos Daily Record, Kevin. Um, you know, what do you attribute to the slow start? It looked like you guys were pressing early, uh, passes that you guys usually catch. You know, you guys are a pretty, a pretty disciplined team. Um, what do you attribute to kind of the slow start? Um, it's just the jitters. Everybody's um, too eager to score, too eager to um, just be out there on the floor. So I just thought the beginning jitters pretty hurt us at the beginning of the game. A little nervous, nervousness. Uh, pick up your second foul, sit out the first half. You know, second half, what's your mindset going in? Obviously, you dropped. I forgot how many points you had at the first half, but uh, what's your mindset going into the second half? Um, stay uh, aggressive, um, be confident. Um, I knew I had to because it's the only way we was going to win. I was going to be aggressive, make shots, and be my team. And I thought I'd do my best. Uh, you were, past two games, you were in foul trouble as well. But the team was able to, you know, especially guys like Nigel, Emmanuel stepping up. Guys, uh, what's it say about the team knowing that those guys were able to keep this team afloat, knowing that you weren't there? It just shows how, um, how good we can be in our, our potential. Um, they stepped up pretty big with, um, the first two games. And just, I just hope they can see that in you know, the next few years. Thank you very much, Kevin. You can head back to the locker room now. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. We'll go ahead with questions for Coach Casper this time. I want to expand on something Kevin said. Listen, we, we, we played with four freshmen a lot this year. And uh, <clears throat> those freshmen helped us win a lot of games, but, but today there was a lot of jitters out there. And I think that speaks for itself. You know, I, I don't think we had uh, – I know Nigel played his butt off, but I don't think he had his game. You know, I, I don't think that – I don't think that any of them played up, up to what they were capable of playing. And when, when Kevin says that they had the jitters, I mean, it's not all on the freshmen, but the freshmen play 
the three freshmen as, as subs play more than some junior college players on our team do. And uh, <clears throat> I was concerned about that coming into the game, them making it a bigger, putting more pressure on themselves than they necessarily need to. Matter of fact, we had that talk before we left the, he the hotel. I said, your biggest enemy is going to be you today. Can you handle the pressure? Are you going to try to do too much? And, in, and I think in some cases we did. Now, I want to give credit to, to, to Troy's defense. I mean, every time we played him, I mean, the second time the defense was better than the first time. The third time their defense was better than the second time. So give some credit to Troy in their defense. <clears throat> but also, I believe that we have a we have a very young team, and and uh, and that kind of inexperience of playing in a big big game showed up this game. Go ahead on the left side. Uh, what were you able to do with uh, Person and Vernardo? You know, two of the probably the hottest tandem in the in the tournament. You guys were able to pretty much hold them to very. Well, well, you know, Jordan and, and and Wes are great, great, great players, but we did what we were supposed to do. They were ten for thirty one, and uh, even Holloman, their third leading scorer. You had him. They're sixteen for forty six. That's not bad. That I mean that that they're they're missing a lot of shots, but. You know, like I said, we can't throw the ball away 17 times to their five and win. We have caused teams to turn it over in the past. And I think that also <clears throat> shows me that we got a little bit away, even though we play with a lot of energy. I, 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 I think uh, there's, there, there, even though Vernardo's a sophomore, but Wes is a junior. He's played on three years now. You know, I believe that they're, they're, they're a little bit more, just more, a little bit more older, a little bit more seasoned. I'm not going to use the word mature, just seasoned than, than we were in, in, in several cases. I don't know. I don't even know if they have a freshman on their team. And I, other than Bernardo, I don't know if there's a, there's a sophomore on their team that plays a lot. Well, there's a lot of freshmen and sophomores that play a lot for me. Go ahead to Gary right in the middle. Right. Um, if somebody had told you that you were going to hold Troy to one for 17 from – three-point range going it. in, would you would you? If have believed someone would have told this? me we would have out-rebounded Troy by three, we would have held him to 35%. We would have gave him one for 17 for the three. Uh, I would have said I'll take that not knowing what the score was going to be. Uh, you're right. I, I've got to say, you know, we didn't – there's two things we didn't do. We didn't take care of the ball, and we didn't get to the free throw line enough. And uh, – <clears throat> 17 threes is not a lot, but – and I'm not going to say it's all us. I, again, I want to credit Phil's team. They've been playing great basketball this last four or five weeks. And my, my own assistants have told me, the one who scouted it, Terrence Johnson, said, Coach, they may be the most talented team in, in, the, in, the, in the league. And um, I considered our victory at Troy one of our, our best, if not our best win at – you know, maybe other than beating UTA the first time we beat him. So, yes, to answer your question, one for 17, 21 for 60, out rebounded by three. Uh, you know, but here's it here, and I think some of this is tied. We had 17 turnovers, they have 10 steals. I'm not sure how many of that was really getting out of passing other than us throwing, you know, bad passes, just panic passes. So, but we're here because of those young men. And you just got to hope that they're going to come through. We have time for one more question, if we have one more. Last one on the left. Um, it's kind of the same question I asked Kevin about. You know, he, he, got in, he got in foul trouble, but like you mentioned, uh, what's to say about the future that you are able to rely on those guys when somebody like Kevin is in foul trouble to keep the boat afloat, to keep you guys going like you've mentioned all season? What's to say about the turnaround you've made at Texas State? Well, you know, and I, I think I, I see Don Coriel, my assistant associate AD, who will supervise basketball in here. You know, you got to understand where I'm at. When we were – my last seven or eight years, if we didn't win 20, 
we, we were very disappointed at Stephen F. Uh, and I mean, we had a team in 2011 that went 18 and 12, or 18 and 11. And I mean, we looked at each other like we finished in last place. 20 and 13 is a good start. But we're hoping that starts parlaying into 25 and 7, 25, 26 and 7 records. Now, I know this Sun Belt is a lot tougher league than one I left. So we're going to continue to get some better players. But it's, it, it's all relative. You know, if a 2A high school wins a state championship, they need to be uh, congratulated as much as a 6A high school. And it's, it's all about mindset. It's all about, you know, culture and mindset. And I think we have our team in a good place in those respects as far as culture, you know, respect and authority, working hard, you know, conduct yourself in a manner that people respect who you are. And I think we have some, you know, some decent talent. We need to add some talent to it, but I think we have some pretty decent talent coming back that we can build on. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you.